Hey everyone, the Social Security Administration has a lot of strange rules, but there's one that takes this to a whole new level and it's called the day before rule. This rule says that your Social Security birthday is the day before your actual birthday. Now, this has a lot of carry through in the Social Security system, including a big impact to when you can receive Social Security benefits. Now, it's a shock to some people when they find out that they can't receive Social Security benefits as soon as they turn 62. So today, I wanna to cover this rule so it won't take you by surprise when you're ready to retire and file for benefits. And speaking of rules, the Social Security Administration has a lot of them. And if you wanna get all the benefits that you've earned, you need to understand the important ones. If you don't yet have a copy of my Social Security Cheat Sheet, you need that and you need it today. It's where I've broken down the most important big rules from the SSA website and I've condensed it all down to just one page. And I'll put a link to that in the description below and yeah, it's completely free too. So let's cover this weird rule and talk about how it relates to filing for benefits at 62. The Social Security Administration requires you to be 62 for a full month before you're eligible for benefits. So for example, if your birthday is June 6th, you wouldn't be eligible for a benefit until the 1st of August because July is the first month in which you've been 62 for at least one full month. So far, you're probably thinking, Devin, that's not really a weird rule. And it's not yet. The weird rule a lot of people don't know about is how they calculate what day your birthday is. It's not your actual birthday. It's the day before. Now, where this rule gets tricky is if you try to calculate your benefit amount, and especially if your birth date falls on the first or second day of the month. Let me show you what I mean here. First, let's look at a filing scenario if your day of birth is any other day besides the first or second. Let's assume your birthday is June 6th. Since you're not 62 for a full month, you're not eligible for a benefit that month. Instead, July is the first month that you're eligible for a benefit, and that benefit will be paid in August. So if someone retired on their birthday and expected their Social Security benefits check to start in the next month, this would be a bit of a nasty surprise to kick retirement off, wouldn't it? So how does this change if you're born on the first or second day of the month? Well, let's assume your birthday is June 1st. The Social Security Administration says that your actual birthday is May 31st. So this means that you are 62 for the entire month of June. That would be the first month of eligibility. And you could receive a benefit payment in July. We see a similar outcome if your birthday is June 2nd. The Social Security Administration uses June 1st as your birthday. And again, since you were deemed to be 62 through the entire month of June, you would be eligible for a benefit with a check starting in July. Now this gets really interesting when you're calculating how much your benefit reduction will be based on your day of birth. Now let's look at three individuals with three consecutive dates of birth. We have Jim, Dan, and Paul. Jim was born on the first of the month. Dan was born on the second of June, and Paul was born on the third of June. Now under their rules, the Social Security birth dates are moved back one day. So Jim's date of birth is May 31st, Dan is June 1st, and Paul is June 2nd, which means that the first month of eligibility for Jim would be June. For Dan, it would also be June because June 1st all the way through the end of June, that's a full month. But for Paul, he would not be eligible until July. So does this actually change the amount of benefits you receive? Yes, it does. Just as a refresher, if your full retirement age is 67 and you file at age 62, then you'll receive 70% of your full retirement age benefit. And those reductions are calculated on a monthly basis. So to see how this works, let's look at Jim's example. Since the Social Security Administration deemed him to be 62 at the end of May, that means that in his first month of eligibility, June, he's technically 62 years and one month old. So therefore, not only can Jim receive benefits for the month he turned 62, but he'll receive those benefits as if he's 62 and one month. So he'll get a little bit of a benefit increase right off the bat. And then Dan is entitled to exactly 70% of his full retirement age benefit. Now, we like to throw that 70% number around a lot. We say that if you're full retirement age is 67 and you file for benefits at 62, you'll get 70% of your 
full retirement age benefit amount. However, it's only those who were born on the second day of the month that can actually receive exactly 70% of their benefit amount. Everyone else is going to get 70.4% of their benefit amount if they file at the earliest age possible. Because in the example of Jim, he filed as soon as he was eligible for benefits, but the Social Security Administration deemed him to be 62 and one month. And then we have Paul. Now, he doesn't become eligible for his benefits until one month after he turned 62. So he'll also receive benefits as if he delayed for one month. But unlike Jim, Paul actually had to wait a month to get that benefit increase. Now, the other way this rule could affect you is if you were born on the first day of the year. If that's the case, your year of birth is deemed to be in the year prior. And depending on the time period you were born, this actually has the ability to change your full retirement age. For example, not long ago, I had someone in my Facebook group that was born on January 1st of 1960. Now, he's thought all along that since his year of birth was 1960, his full retirement age would be age 67. But with the day before rule, his retirement age is actually 66 and 10 months. This means that he would be able to get his full benefit a little bit earlier than he expected. Now, I wish I could say that this day before rule is the most convoluted rule that the administration has, but it's not. There are lots of rules that's even more complex than this, but one assurance I can give you is that as I come across these rules, and I think they'll impact you, I'm going to cover it right here on this channel or over on my blog, which you can find at socialsecurityintelligence.com. So before you click out, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notifications bell, and that way, you'll know as soon as I publish something new. Hey, also, I always love to hear what you're thinking. If this rule affects you, or if you just wanna leave some other comment, let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.